Hello and welcome back to my community on Afrocentric Television Channel 15.8. You know, we have come to the end of our segment and we're around, you know, we can't leave you without talking about what this season is about, which is Easter. And to help us give, shed some light and give us highlights on what Easter is about and what resurrection should be, I have with me Dr. A. A. Ajim, the senior pastor of Grace International Church on Bel Air, Houston, Texas. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for <laughs> joining us, and I appreciate you honoring our invite. Thank you. Um, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and the Church of God, which is um, Grace International Church? Well, Grace International Church started as a prayer meeting of two families during my residency in New York, uh, during the residence in South Bronx, New York. And the Lord led us to start praying. So that's all we did. We just started praying. We never really planned to start a church. But one thing led to the other, and it was obvious that the church was needed. My wife and I are both physicians, so we were extremely busy. But with uh, uh, the leading of the Lord and just doors that God opened, the church was established. New York church is going strong. They're growing every day. I go there every now and again. Then we moved down to Houston in 2002. The Houston church started in 2003. And like they say, the rest is history. God has done amazing things that I'm so shocked to be part of it. <laughs> I think that... Um, the, the thing that marvels me most is our diversity. As at the last count, there are people from 40 different nationalities of the world, both at New York and Houston, and we have a Spanish church as well in Houston. So people wow. from 40 different nationalities. And that's what's amazing to me. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing him draw people of various backgrounds and ethnicities and upbringings. And we give him all the praise and all the glory. For Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I like that because, I mean, so you have to leave your practice as a, or you're still practicing. I'm still practicing. As, a, as an MD. Yes, yes. Still oh, practicing. Wow. Actually, now I'm more involved in uh, the business part of practicing. We I oversee pre-stand in emergency rooms. So I don't do clinical medicine anymore. Gotcha. We have physicians working. That wow. has been good. It sure has been. And I like that. And thank you for taking time out to draw people onto God. Mm -hmm. So I, I know, you know, you, you mentioned something about, and, you know, we are growing. I have been to your church uh, a few times. And, um, of course, when I came in today, I saw a new structure. Can you tell us what that structure is about? Yes. Uh, we are building a structure next door. It's going to be really a community center. There will be uh, an event center in it. There will be a cafeteria there, gym. Uh, our daycare is going to move there from its current structure, so okay. that we'll have more rooms here for ministry. So it's going to be, it's going to take us much more than just being a church into a community center where we can minister to much more people's needs as opposed to just church. So we're really, really excited about it. We give okay, God praise. Because I mean. Um, if you look at it, it looks like you've seen my, my Q&A here because I, I have a question for you as to what the church and yourself, of course, and your whole family and the church family is doing to impact the community here in Houston. And since, you know, you said something about the structure and how it's going to be impactful for and to the community here in Houston, can you shed more light on how on ways you plan to go about that? And also, if there's anything you're doing for uh, as regards that also in New York. We are a very, very community conscious church. We are involved in just tons of different outreaches to the community, especially the less privileged. We do a lot of uh, distribution of um, groceries and food and things of that nature, especially during major events like Christmas or Easter. Uh, this Easter on Saturday, we will be doing an Easter egg hunt and um, where the community is invited and uh, there will be free food, there will be distribution of materials and the whole goal is evangelistic to let 
people know what Easter is about. I think the mistake we, we make often as Christians is we tend to complain about, you know what, don't people know what Easter is about? But they don't know until, they won't know until we tell them. Yeah, because a lot of us believe it's about the bunnies and the eggs. Exactly. And then, and, you know, just hang out with families, have exactly. a little barbecue in the backyard and stuff. Can you shed more light on what Easter is about? Because we can't, we can't just close out today without talking about the reason for the season. That's right. right now is the resurrection of Christ, right? So, and that's the season we are in, the Easter season. We have Good Friday, we have um, Easter Sunday, and Easter Monday. What is significant about those days? Easter is the single most important effect, event, excuse me, that the Christian faith is hinged on. Without Easter, there's no Christianity. It is when Christ really died for our sins, and as it were, it seemed all hope was lost. And on the third day, the Bible records, he rose with all power in his hands. Now, the, the, the real significance of Easter is not just in Christ dying and being raised from the dead. Because all through the Bible, people have died and rose from the dead. Mm. Even in the Old Testament, the Shunammite woman died. Elijah rose her from the dead. The widow of Zarephath died. Elijah rose her from the dead. Even Christ rose something from the yeah, dead. Yeah, Lazarus died, rose from the dead. The Jairus' daughter died, rose from the dead. Even after the, 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 the resurrection of Christ, Dorcas and Eutychus, they died and rose from the dead. But what is different from all of this and the resurrection of Christ is that all of these people, they died, they rose from the dead, and they died again. Mm -hmm. When Jesus died and rose from the dead, his tomb is empty. He rose never to die again, mm -hmm. to let us know that we can eternally have hope. We, that we may not have been a people, regardless of where we come from, when we come to him, we find solace, we find help, we find comfort. And we can put our eternal trust in him because he's not a dead God. Hmm. He's alive and is a God that wants to help, that wants to bless, that wants to strengthen. I feel very, very well informed now. I, I mean, um, this is unique to the season we are in. And, and it feels like the first time. This is not the first time I'm married, but it feels like the, the first time. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're able to renew my hope. In Christ, and I'm sure my viewers also, you know, their hopes renewed, you know, just listening to you. Um, we can't round up without you having to um, say a word or two to lives that are yet to know Christ, um, especially during this season that we know He came, He died for us, and rose again. Um, you know, just um, give a word or two to um, the people that are lost, that are in search of hope that are hoping, you know, someday, some way it's going to be, it's going to be better. Um, you know, that have lost hope, that people have given up on, that they are written off and all of those. Um, you know, just like Christ came, dead and ro died rather, and rose again. And that gave us hope for eternal uh, peace. Can you please shed the light on, on some things like that? Thank you. Sure. The scripture teaches that the power that God used to raise Christ from the dead is available to us today as a believer. That means we are not helpless. We are not hopeless. We are not defenseless. We may feel like that. We are not. It felt like that when Christ died. The disciples scattered all over the place. Peter denied him three times. They were shocked that God died. They thought it was ended. They thought it was done. They thought there was doom. And you may be watching us and you're feeling like that. Maybe in your finances, your health, maybe it's your immigration or your marriage. Mm. You think that all hope is lost. I want you to know that if God could raise Christ from the dead, he can raise your situation too. He can bring hope again. He can bring help again. He can bring strength again. So don't give up. All is not lost. God is still in control. His power is available to you. That's what I need you to understand. This Easter resurrection power is available to you and I if we can trust God. Just put your hope in Him.
God is a miracle working God. That same God that excited that miraculous event in Easter that we all celebrate today, 2,000 years after. He will do the same for that situation that seems hopeless, that seems dead in your life. So just call out to him. Trust him. Because the power of Easter, the resurrection power, is available to us today. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. I would say Dr. Pastor Dr. Ajim. Hey, the one is I am Thank grateful you. to you. And now for our viewers, as you can see, I got a little emotional there because I mean, we're talking about Christ and the resurrection and the way he gave hope to, to people in the time past. He's giving hope to us now. And um, like the pastor said, rightly, he said the power that is, is available to you and I, to him, um, to every one of us, if only we can believe and trust in God. You know, a lot of times we trust in other pastors or other humans, and they are, don't forget they are first humans before they got the anointing and the calling from God. So trust in God. You know, you Christ in us, the hope of salvation, they yes, say. Yes, the hope of So, God. yeah, so, mm-hmm. I mean, you just have no other choice but to trust in God and be hopeful. Mm-hmm. So by so doing, we will like to round up the show today and give a very warm thank you, thank you. to Pastor thank Dr. You. Ajim. And I'm grateful to, you know, listen to you talk about Christ today. Thank you. And until next time, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, our YouTube channel. It's uh, Afrocentric Television, channel 15.8. Um, like our page on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Um, If you also have anything you need to do as regards, you know, um, events or whatnot, please do not hesitate to to reach out to us. Until next time, see you again. I remain your friend and anchor.